Hey, what's up guys? Keys, I'm McNeil. Thank you for tuning into the channel. Today, we are going to talk about buying that first rental property. Let me first congratulate you for taking that big step. You are making an awesome decision. First, let's jump out there. Look, don't worry about if it's a single family, two unit, four unit, 10 unit, 12 unit, whatever. There's a lot of information out here when you see some people recommending, don't buy single families, don't buy condos, don't buy four units. You know, only buy multi-units. And some people have their reasons for saying that, but let me tell you, in my experience, I've owned multi-units, I've owned condos, I've owned single families, and it all works for me. Because at the end of the day, remember, people have to have somewhere to stay. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're talking about you buying your first rental property. Pat yourself on the back. Man, that's awesome. I'm glad you're thinking that way because now you're buying something that's gonna be immediately considered an asset, okay? So let's kind of go over what you need to do. And I call that the foundation. Now, there are ways you can buy properties with no money. There are ways you can go borrow money, hard money, and all this. Yes, there are so many ways you can do this, but I'm speaking to someone right now who is starting from scratch. So if that is you, you're just like, hey, I've seen all this information. And if you're like me, when I first started out in real estate, you can become overwhelmed because there's so many different things people are saying. So I'm gonna take that away. This is all you need to do. I'm gonna give you the steps. First, make sure you have your credit in order. You do not have to have an 800 credit score. I'm gonna tell you that right now. What you wanna shoot for is somewhere along the lines of a 680, and up okay 680 and up now i would encourage you to try to make sure you have at least a 700 but a 680 and up you're going to be in a great position to obtain a loan okay now since you are only you're buying your first rental property and for many of you you may be buying your first property in general maybe you're still renting and you want to invest so there's a thing called an fha loan okay so if this is your first time buying a property period, meaning you don't have a property in your name right now, meaning your permanent residence, okay? You can get what they call an FHA loan, put as little as 3% down, and you can go up to four units. Anything over four units will be considered a commercial loan and that will call for different type of financing and different type of down payment, et cetera. However, the thing you wanna do is secure about three to 5%. If you're qualifying for an FHA loan, now this only means the fact that you have never bought any property, meaning you don't have a current property in your name right now, meaning your permanent residence, your current residence. So you're buying your first brand new property. FHA is gonna be the way to go. And imagine buying a four unit building, right? You live in one unit and the tenants are paying the mortgage. Amazing. But for some of us, they don't wanna do that. And that's totally fine. You can rent all four units out, that's cool. But the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your credit together. I call that the foundation. Can't, ain't, nothing can happen. I don't care what anyone tells you. If you're just starting out in this business, yes, we know you can do a lot of things in real estate, no money down. Yes, but let's, I'm talking to the person right now who just really wants to get in the game. They're saving up some money and they're getting their credit together. So start with that, get your credit in order. I, I recommend at least a 680 score. You wanna lower your debt to income ratio. So what that means, if you have credit cards that you have right now, you wanna get those balances down. I recommend making sure you have your total credit card balance or, or DTI. Make sure you have that under, I like to say 20%. So you don't use any more than 20% of the credit that you're allowed, right? So that is very important because what, what it does is lenders look at that. Well, how much money are they spending? You know, where are their resources allocated? What are they doing, right? That gives them a, a pretty good picture. And the reason why they look at credit cards because it's unpredictable because you could use it all in one month or not use it. Now, installment loans, like your car note, you know, things like that. Maybe you have a, a loan out on uh, some furniture or something like that. That's different because that payment is what it is, right? So we're not talking about installment loans. You know, we're talking about credit cards. That's kind of like that revolving uh, credit where the balances can fluctuate. We want to make sure we keep that. I recommend under 25, 20%. Try to keep it there. So that'll keep the lenders and they'll feel really confident in, in giving you a loan. So first thing you want to do is make sure you have your credit score around 680 better. Make sure you have your, your uh, credit card balances. You want to get them 
25% or lower, that's going to be a really good picture. And obviously, you have a job. If you're self-employed, make sure you have those tax returns to prove that you are making a predictable income for the last three years. Now it's what FHA is kind of looking at, or just lenders in general who want to go conventional. But so don't get too caught up in you got to make a hundred thousand dollars right now to get a property. It's not really about that, you know. So as you show them your your income and you start to look at the application and, and writing down the application and trying to see what you qualify for, I strongly recommend that because that's going to make realtors really want to work with you. You know, um, just give, give give an example. Uh, you know, you may have excellent scores and great credit, and you go to a real estate agent and you want them to show you some properties, right? They're not going to be excited about doing it because you haven't even gotten pre-approved yet. See, getting pre-approved is letting these realtors know that this person's ready to make a move. They're serious. So once I find them the right opportunity, they're ready to buy. So they can show the sellers, realtor, realtor, that this person's already qualified. They've qualified for X, Y, Z, and they're ready to go. Meaning they have what we call proof of funds in the business. So very simple steps. Get your credit in order. Give it above a 680. Get your debt to income and your credit card balances. That's what I'm really concerned with. Get that under 25% total utilization, all right? And then go get pre-approved. Now, if you're self-employed, have your tax returns ready and prepared. But if you're W-2, same thing applies, but you, they want to want to see current pay stubs and then they also want to see tax returns as well. So do those things. Now, once you get in the real estate game, you may decide that, man, I, I like this, but I want to scale. Right? I want to scale because there are advantages and disadvantages to both. I'll give you a quick one. Let's say you own a 15 unit building, right? And you're the owner of the building and renting it out and everything. And now you decide, I want to sell the building now, right? You're only going to be able to market that building to what? Other investors who want to buy multi unit buildings, period. Nothing wrong with that, but that's going to be your market. On the other hand, if you own, let's say, a single family or maybe even a condo, now when you go to sell, you're going to cater to two markets the retail market of people looking to buy a home or condo, and then also the investors' market. So, you know, there are advantages to both. There are disadvantages and advantages to both. Some people think that, why would I want to have 15 single families when I can have one 15 unit building because I only have one roof to repair? There's something to be said about that. Or if a tenant moves out of my 15 unit building, I'm still receiving income. Adversely to that, if you have a single family and a tenant moves out, your money stops. I don't worry about that because I know that people always have to have a place to stay. I don't care how much technology we come out, how many apps and all that stuff. At the end of the day, you still have to have a place to rest your head, period. And there is a market for various income levels. So. You don't necessarily have to go out and try to buy the newest, best looking house all the time. You know, you buy something that's definitely livable, of course. Different areas, you got an urban community, you may have a suburban community. There are always going to be a supply of renters ready to rent. That is another video, but I just want to kind of give you some perspective because there's so much information that floats around it. It can discourage people and I, I realize that. So um, the first thing I want you to do is make sure you have your foundation. And again, getting your credit together. Don't worry about, oh, if I do this, I can get a line of credit. No, just get your personal credit scores above 680. I also want you to go pre-qualify, right? With the lender, you know, so you can get a pre-approval letter. So now that realtors will bring you properties to look at. And of course, you wanna make sure you get your debt to income ratio. I want you to get it below 25% utilization for your credit card. You know, and obviously if you do things better than that, that's just gonna put you in a better position to get a great interest rate, et cetera, et cetera, right? One thing I wanna add is that you you also, um, you're looking at about three to 5%. FHA, if you never bought before, FHA is about 3.5%. That's total down payment, everything in. They wrap the closing cost in, you're done, that's awesome. That is a great way to start. But, you know, if you can't go FHA and you go conventional, maybe five to 7% down. So I would also recommend you start stacking some money. I don't care if you're putting away $100 a week, $200 a week, whatever you can put away a week, start putting it away now. Cause there's nothing like going to the closing table and you can't close. So we wanna make sure that we have all this stuff out of the way up front. And it's not a lot, it's not a lot. All you gotta remember, 680 and above credit score, get my credit cards under 25% utilization. 
go get pre-approved and make sure I'm stacking some down payment money. So if you're looking at a property that's, let's say, 100,000, you're gonna stack at least anywhere from five to 6% of that. That's it. Don't complicate it. Get that first property. It's gonna be life-changing for you, I promise. And I'm telling you, it's only gonna to lead to more and more real estate. Because what happens is it gets easier and easier because you learn different things and then you kind of see where you wanna to gravitate to. So you may, you may decide again, you, you want only condos, you want only single families, or you say, I only want multi-unit stuff. But you gotta start somewhere. And you don't have to always start with the end in mind. You don't, you know, you have to start where you can start. Don't get caught up in what you think everyone else is doing or what you see on social media. Don't be fooled by that. How they make it look so easy and they have all these, they had to start somewhere. Okay? I hope this helps you out. I hope it's made you more confident about uh, targeting that first property. Go for it. What's the worst you can get? No, and it's not really a no, it's just it's not right now. That's all it is, it's not right now. Because if you do get that no in terms of trying to get pre-approved, now you kind of know what you need to work on, right? But I'm telling you right now, get these things in order first and you won't have that problem. It'll just be more of a matter of how much you can pre-qualify for. And that's gonna come down to those things I mentioned and also your income that you currently make at your job or if you're um, self-employed, right? That's it. Enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so that you can be updated on future updates. In this channel here, all I talk about is career advancement, financial tips and hacks, and we make sure that we learn from this, guys. I'll see you guys all on the next episode.